Okay guys, it's Squall and welcome back to the channel. So we're gonna do another worm unboxing, but we're gonna do a little bit different. Last time I had it into two bins and I it was the first time doing it. I've had some uh, experience with the worms now. And I'm actually gonna show you a little bit more of my setup uh, when it comes to the worms and how I'm gonna continue forward. I'm actually gonna start breeding them. So let's start by getting this open and getting some of them in there, just like we did last time. Uh, this time I'm using a bigger bin. Um, I've drilled holes in the sides to kind of give airflow because the oatmeal is only going to come up to about here and then the top of the lid I've also drilled holes in completely. Um, you'll want to uh, keep the lid on there at all times but every once in a while if it starts to uh, steam up inside you want to kind of prop the lid on there. They can't get out so you don't have to worry about nothing there but uh, anyway that's just what I've kind of come up with. So let's get this open and then let's move on. Uh, I got my box cutter here. Last time I got a couple of comments about how I was a sissy for not using my uh, for using gloves. When reality is, is it's probably better to use gloves this time. Not only do I not have any gloves, rubber gloves, right now, I'm too lazy to get them. So now you guys can't call me a sissy anymore, even though it had nothing to do with that. Okay, they come in this uh, kind of knapsack-like thing. And looks like some of them kind of got a loose. Oh, looks like only one's loose in there. Let's see if this is going to be newspaper this time. If it is, we'll pour it back into the box. Come on, you little shit. It smells awesome. Although I have to admit, it doesn't smell nearly as bad as crickets. And you can hear my kids calling each other names in there. So, okay, so they did put newspaper in there like always, so I'm going to go ahead and toss this into the box first so I can separate it. Mmm, worm powder. That ought to be good to breathe. <clears throat> you guys are lucky I'm filming this on a on a dry spell on my medication. Medication kind of comes in waves. So, I got lucky and was able to record how oh, there's still some worms in there, but we can put those in here. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the oatmeal in there. Okay, and the other thing while I will put in here also is like a half a potato. I'll cut it up and I'll switch it out in and out. But uh, anyway, the next thing I wanted to talk about before I get them all in here is I am going to be separating them into cups. Now you say all of them? No, I'm going to be separating about probably 50 of them or close to 50 of them into these cups because I want them to be alone. They will not uh, go into a larva state without being in just a single cup. Once they're colonized, um, they don't larva up. They're afraid, they, they're afraid to get eaten. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate them. And then what they will do is they will turn into one of these guys. And hopefully I'm getting this on screen. So anyway, they'll turn into one of these guys and I'll try to take a picture and upload it so you guys can see it. In fact, I'll kind of open it. And this guy's probably not gonna finish cycling. But what'll happen is, is after this stage, they will turn into a beetle. And once they turn into beetles, um, I'm gonna switch them into a new container. Now that new container is gonna is gonna change. Um, it won't be anything like this. I've got worms going everywhere, so I better hurry up there. But uh, anyway, I won't be showing that in this video. I'm gonna be showing that in the next video. So this will kind of be a two part series. But I'm gonna kind of run through this, and then at the end of the video, if you guys stick, stay tuned, I will cut to uh, showing you feeding um, one of my bearded dragons. Logan, and you guys also get to see Remy. Um, you guys seen him just a few moments ago, or not a few moments ago, you seen him in the past video um, of me showing him off for the first time. You guys will actually get to see him eat because he eats like an animal and he absolutely loves these. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get started moving these over. Uh, I'll fast forward through that and then cut to you guys uh, getting to see me feed the reptiles. So here goes. Okay guys, so while this is fast forwarding through a lot of the uh, 
the miscellaneous me dropping the worms into the bin and switching the worms into the little uh, containers I wanted to talk about the life cycle a little more before when I was talking about them I kept calling them larva um, is what they turn into but what the super worm in the super worm itself is is a larva you guys are gonna see on screen some images pop up as I talk about this but uh, so the first thing they start off as eggs they're very tiny, about a tenth of an inch, um, super small, almost can't see. I think they're kind of white in color. Um, we'll see as the time goes on. I'm going to try and take pictures as the stages go by. I may not be able to get pictures. But what happens is, is these eggs are laid into like um, rotten fruit, uh, rotten potatoes, whatever you happen to have in there that they're feeding on. So you will not want to get rid of this when you put this into the container when it comes time to move them over. But anyway, they start as eggs. Once they um, hatch out of the eggs there, they become small superworms over time. So they'll be about a half inch to three quarter of an inch, about the size of a penny, is about the size of a small superworm or what's considered a small superworm. You can give these things to like um, your baby bearded dragons, um, small leopard geckos, things like that. Um, they work great for feeding those kind of... Uh, uh, those size reptiles. Uh, the next thing is going to be a large superworm, which is what you guys see on screen, which is about a one and a half inch to two and a quarter inch superworm. Um, those will last pretty long the way they are. If you guys keep them in the oatmeal together, uh, colonized, they will not um, turn into uh, pupae. They'll just kind of stay what they are, which is the larva, the, the superworm, because they're moving around, they're afraid to pupae, all that kind of stuff. It's not until you stick them into those little two ounce containers or there's not enough of them to kind of feel each other moving that they'll do that. So once they are done and you've put them into the two ounce containers, which is what I've done, they will turn into the pupae, which is what you've seen inside that one container that I showed you on screen a few moments ago. Once they've, uh, you know, done that, then they're on their way to becoming what is next in the stage, which is a white beetle. That beetle is going to be about a one and a half inch to two inch beetle. Um, that is kind of a very short stage, I think, that they're in. Uh, from there, they'll then turn into the black beetle, which is what you want to start uh, laying eggs. Once you get a black beetle, you can have them in the oatmeal with the um, with the vegetable, the potato, and they will start to lay eggs and feed. And, and, and those can do that for about six months, I believe, and they can lay quite a few eggs in that time. But uh, that's kind of the life cycle of the superworm that lasts usually three to six months from what they say. I will give you guys a more rep uh, accurate representation as I go along. So uh, let's go back to the video, guys. Okay, guys, so we are back. Uh, worms are moved into the bucket, the bin, uh, the feeding bin. This will be fed to the uh, reptiles. We'll get two potatoes in there, we'll put the lid on, and that'll be good. And then this is going to be boxed up. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna close this off, and I'm gonna stick it into somewhere dark uh, so that uh, they're not messed with or anything like that. They will turn into, uh, slowly turn into beetles. I'll have to keep checking them. And I will do an update video for you guys on uh, what they will go into next and kind of the stages as they go. I'm actually gonna write down today's date and I'm gonna write down the date that they start turning. And that way I can kind of give you guys an accurate representation of how long it takes to do this um, from start to finish until you start seeing actual superworms uh, for breeding. But uh, anyways, I'm gonna move to feeding the reptiles and uh, we'll go from there. See you guys in a few minutes. Okay guys, we are back. Uh, here is my guy, Logan. Rogue's gonna be down here. Uh, we're not gonna feed her right now. She's up hiding in her spot and so I'm gonna leave her be. But uh, this is Logan, this is my, my big man. Uh, he's my biggest male bearded dragon. He's about 450 grams. Got a big old head, I love his head. And uh, he's my also probably my most mellow bearded dragon. We are going to feed him now. And let's see, got to make sure I grab the right one because he eats quite a bit more than Remy, although I think Remy would try to eat as much as him. So we're going to go ahead and set him down some worms. And he will go at it like an animal. Look at that. Heck yeah. They were going to take some pictures while we go, huh? Get him. Oh, you can do it. Anyway, guys, that is Logan. Absolutely fantastic bearded dragon. I love this guy. He's just a normal citrus looking dragon with some kind of blue barring on his sides. But uh, love him to death. And uh, next we are going to move on to Remy, which you guys haven't seen him eat before. But uh, that's my biggest male, 440 grams. My female, she's about 
360 grams last time we checked. Um, I'll do an update video on them here pretty soon. In fact, you know what? Here is a clip of them uh, in the pool together out in the summer. They're not quite ready to mate, but uh, it was kind of cute to see them in the pool together. So here's a video of them doing that, and then I'm gonna move over and we're gonna feed Remy. Guys, we are back over here. Remy, you can see he knows it's food time. Look at him all ready to go. He knows this is the food bucket. So we're gonna go ahead and drop a couple in there. Drop one at a time. Look at him go. Oh, mm, yummy. <laughs> That's my leopard gecko eating like a champ. I'm glad we picked him up because we've definitely fell in love. I think my littlest guys, uh, my younger two boys, love him absolutely the most. Go ahead and drop a couple more in here for him. He eats like a monster. <laughs> and he absolutely loves these super worms, so we keep giving them to him. But uh, anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, I will try to do an update video on weights and sizes and then it's he's come on let's get out of there oh, you can't see in there but uh anyway guys hope you guys enjoyed the video i will try to throw up some pictures of him in the sunlight i did that in the last video too but uh i'll go ahead and do that in this video too so in case you missed the last video but uh hope you guys enjoyed that one and uh thanks for stopping by